All right, how's it going, y'all? So today is the day that a lot of people have been waiting for, and that is that Synology has finally unveiled the DSM 7.2 release candidate, or RC. So a release candidate is essentially the, hey, we think it's out of beta. Everything looks pretty good. It, it, we kicked the tires. You should be okay, kind of release. And in my experience, honestly, when Synology unveils a beta, it tends to be more stable in my experience than a lot of companies' actual releases. And so a release candidate for Synology tends to be quite good. Now I would say any businesses definitely should probably hold off and wait off just in case, especially if you're running a lot of stuff because you never know what kind of quirks you could have. You probably will not be having data loss, but you may have weird bugs. And so just waiting for everybody else to go to the DSM 7.2 and kind of get those all worked out before actually updating is probably the move. But for home users, especially those with good backups. Everybody should have a good backup. The release candidates from Synology tend to be totally fine to install with the understanding that there is a small but real chance that you may have downtime or weird bugs to work out or anything like that. I would be very shocked if installing the release candidate caused you to have any data loss. That's kind of how it is. In my experience with Synology through their multiple update cycles, they are very good. And I've been running the DSM 7.2 beta since it came out and have thrown everything under the sun in it. But there are a few things, especially when it comes to things like encrypted volumes and the new features that I do wish they would add more features to and kind of clean up. But when it comes to actual data protection, Synology is really good about this. So I would not worry too much about updating as long as you understand the fact that you may run into a weird case where this workflow you've been doing might not work. Synology also does not allow you to downgrade. You can via SSH and actually going in and doing it but it's really not something that's generally supported and I would not recommend it unless you really have to, but that does tend to speak volumes about how much testing and everything goes in even before they release a beta. I mean, the amount of times I've updated my TrueNAS core box or TrueNAS scale box and had a really weird performance issue and how to downgrade has been a ton. Thankfully, TrueNAS does have boot environment, which makes it insanely easy to downgrade because literally you just go, hey, this update did not work. I'm just going to reboot my machine to the previous version. And it's just instantly exactly how you had it. But Synology does not have that. And so it's both a good and a bad thing. Obviously, it's nice to have that. But because they do not have the ability to downgrade, Synology, when they have an update, very, very, very rarely ever has something that you would really want to downgrade to. The notable exception is the big updates from like a DSM-6 to a DSM-7 where there can be a lot of things that go wrong, especially with DSM-7, they redid the package architecture and what permissions third-party packages had. And so a lot of stuff like Plex got broken. This is not gonna be one of those cases. Pretty much everything is just very cleanly updated. All right, so now that answers this question, should I update? TLDR, businesses, probably not. Home users, if you want to and you have a good backup. Tinkerers should feel safe too. All right, so now, Let's talk about what has changed since the beta came out. And in all honesty, not much has. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open up my post on the forums over here. And we will see right here, very little has changed. If you contrast this from the previous DSM 7.2 beta. So really you look in right here, very, very, very few things have been added. They added oddly enough, some old adapters in here. So some new devices can now use that old adapter, which is just an NVMe adapter for a PCIe bus. It's PCI Gen 2. And right here, they added a couple of extra devices in their ability to have a NVMe storage volume on them rather than just NVMe SSD caching. And those are listed right here. So the big things that have changed is they've added in the 423 and the 723. I don't believe either one of those were on there. It's funny because the DS423 Plus has the exact same CPU as the DS920 Plus and the DS920 Plus does not have that. I was actually surprised that they added a Intel option on here. I thought they were only gonna be focusing on the AMD options, but you can see that the 1621XS Plus has it as well, which was also not on there. A couple more units have it on there. Really, this is only useful for people who are tinkering, running Docker containers, and really want to get really good performance for a specific volume. I've been thinking about a new deployment for my clients on having like the Synology Drive database stored on here, which would be very, very, very valuable. 
things that have a very small amount of data in them, like under 100 gigs, but need the fastest operations, that's where having an NVMe storage volume can really be valuable. Then if you look through here, there's really not much of anything else on here, except when you go down to fixed issues and they're taking credit for a lot of stuff here. Obviously, I mean, they, they've got a ton of CVEs that they're knocking out, but it's not like they're the ones who are actually updating for these CVEs. Really all they're doing is updating these open source packages and add them on there. This is kind of the, the process with a beta to release candidate. You put everything that's kind of like cutting edge for your setup on the beta. And then when it comes to the release candidate, you go through and you fix everything. So that's the whole point of the beta process is you get stuff reported and figure out what's broken because as soon as you put stuff in users' hands, they will figure out how to break it. And that's exactly how it should work. And so during this, they also go, all right, we now know that it's somewhat stable. So they get the beta to a somewhat stable place and then they start updating packages as well to make sure everything just works in cohesion. So now we get a ton of CVEs that have been knocked out. The majority of these likely were not even exploitable on Synology, but it is still great that they are knocking these out and updating every single one of these. So it's definitely, if you're running the beta right now, you should definitely go ahead and do the update. Now let's talk about how to install it for people who are looking to. So installing it is actually very straightforward and grabbing the file is a lot easier. So all you need to do is go into the good old Synology download center. And all you do is you put in your model. So I'm going to do the DS923. And now you'll see you've got two different options for what to install. You've got the 7.1 series and the 7.2 series, which is great. And right here you have the RC, which you can just go ahead and download. When I was doing this earlier, it was clear that people were slamming the server and I was getting like under one megabyte per second. It's going a lot faster now, but these things are getting hit hard and a lot of people are clearly downloading it. And you just take that downloaded.pat file, go into your NAS, go into control panel, go into update inner store, do one final backup, kick the tires, make sure you've got everything you want to because you never know what can happen. It's incredibly unlikely, but you never know what will happen. And then you just come in right here and you do a manual DSM update and upload that file. The update for me took maybe 15 minutes and it did have a reboot, but it was not too bad. I was updating from DSM 7.2 beta to release candidate. And overall, the update went quite smooth. The other thing is once you update, there are a ton of packages. I think almost every single package has an update as well. So still, this has been going on for about mm, probably an hour of updating every single one of the packages. For a video, I downloaded pretty much all the packages in the package center. So I have way more than most people would have on here, but it is updating every single one of the packages. And because everybody's hitting it right now, the package center is being a lot slower. And so you can just do an update all because a lot of stuff got updated with that. So one thing that is unfortunate is they have not yet, if you go into the knowledge center, they do not yet have the DSM 7.2 that I was hoping they would have. So normally about this time, their knowledge center would also have all the DSM 7.2 stuff. Synology has one of the best knowledge centers out there in my opinion. Finding any setting, you can do it very easily on here and they actually keep it for older DSM versions on here. So you can just say your DSM version. They do not yet have this updated for DSM 7.2 at least none that I have seen. So that does have one unfortunate thing is we don't have things like if we go into the storage manager over here, we don't yet have the ability to have a bunch of help articles on how to use DSM's 7.2's new features like encrypted volumes. Everything's still stuck stuck in DSM 7.1. So that was just one thing I didn't want to mention really quick, but they do at least have articles for things like SMB3 multi-channel, which is now part of DSM 7.2. And so I'm very excited to be doing a video on that very shortly. So pretty much that's it. From my experience, not too much has changed. And really that is exactly what you want. I still have a lot of testing to do with the release candidate and I'm not expecting it to stay a release candidate too long. I've got a post on here on the forums that I would love people to comment on, on their experiences, any issues they're running into, trying to collect that for my own knowledge bank. So I will leave a link to that as well. And I love it to hear about people's experiences. Has it worked? Has it not? 
I still have a lot of testing to do when it comes to things like the encrypted keys and everything like that. And also really seeing what kind of performance we can get out of SMB V3 multi-channel, which is going to be very useful for everybody who has a NAS that only has one gigabit ports on the back, but has the ability to have multiple connections to their computer, or even in some cases, a single 10 gig connection to their computer bonded over two or four one gig connections to the NAS in specific workflows, especially just large file transfers, that can be very useful. And so go ahead and leave any of your experiences down in the comments below and check out the post on the forums. All right, have a good one. Bye.